time, people didn't question. It was not what one did. People didn't bother to question. And for people that didn't know themselves, they oftentimes found themselves in a design for which they truly dispositionally were not suited. But had they had the skill and the awareness and the permission to ask themselves, what do I do? And where can I create a loving, rich, committed partnership? What is my truth? They would have met greater success, correct? So as I watched the decades pass, you know, in the 1950s, if you wanted to be physical with somebody, you put a ring on it. And then you've got all the changes in the 20th century. You've got civil rights, you've got gay rights, you've got the birth control pill, you've got sex separated from relationships. You've got people creating all different kinds of things and experimenting. And by the time we came to the year 2000 and entered the 21st century, I could feel the shift. And I could sense from my friends and the people I was talking to, though I was newly in this work, I knew that we were headed for a problem. Because while I wanted to update the structure, I realized that while we're rocking the cage of the existing structure and divorce is rampant and people are upset and they have looking good relationships that are not fulfilling them and they're feeling frustrated and they're seeking, but they're not creating. You know, you can't destroy a structure without having established a valid infrastructure to catch you. So for those of you, my followers, my friends, people that know my work that are dating now, you know how hard it's been in the 21st century. And this isn't just America. It is harder and harder to get into relationships and yet we know so much more about ourselves. And part of the reason is that we haven't done some initial steps to really refine what we want. Yes, everybody wants to love and be loved, that's simple. But oftentimes it is the misrepresentation of what we think we should do for the wrong reasons. And if we were able to craft a structure that could cradle our love and support our committed relationships, that fostered growth, that had growth fused into the design from stage one, then we could have a shot to grow with our partner. So I want to propose this to you because as I watched people in the early 2000s, I remembered looking at all my friends were crying, men were crying, women were crying, everybody was upset because they were kind of piggybacking on the gold standard and they were dating and they were having physical relationships and they didn't know where it was going. They just didn't know what was happening. So they were being fooled and people were promising things they couldn't do. So I'm going to introduce you to my love a la carte method, which is very much like ordering off a menu. So we know the main entree is committed relationship, okay? And we know what that looks like, but we want to find out how you want to participate, okay? Uh, you know, my father used to have a really easy way to figure out what he wanted on a menu. He'd start with what he didn't want. And when he'd get through all the things he didn't want, he'd find the thing that he did want. And this is nowadays what we call dating. <laughs> okay, everyone. So, oh wait, I have something even more important to tell you. For those of you who believe that there's nobody anymore that wants to commit and you're getting all these people that say, oh, I don't do relationships. You know, I just don't want to encumber myself with labels. Yes, I understand the philosophical argument. Labels limit. The minute we label something, we have put a restriction on it. But in dating, in relationships, we need terms, terms we understand, we need guidance, we need to know where to lay our head. So I want you to know that it is my observation and my belief that the problem we have today with most relationships is less a problem of commitment and more a problem of structure. It is a structural problem and that's what we're going to solve today. Okay, there are five steps. I'm going to walk you through them and then we're going to open this up to question and answer. You can, it doesn't take too long to do this. This is preliminary work, but I want you to really consider these things. Okay, so step number one it's to ask yourself what you want. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, Susan, please, I know what I want, right? I think you might not. If you just say, I want a partner and I want a relationship, I don't think that's good enough. So, if you are dating, if you are currently with somebody, it's worth reviewing. What do you want? 
Start with a label or term that is easily understandable to everyone. Basic categories, boyfriend, girlfriend, summer fling, uh, spouse, uh, a companion, use a word that we know. Then underneath that word, I want the descriptive phrase that is similar or different. This is your unique twist on it. Please, you need this if you're doing online dating and you need this if you're meeting somebody. You want to make sure that your goals match and you want to make sure that you represent yourself properly. You know, part of the heartache out here is that people are not representing themselves properly. They're too greedy. They know they don't do, they don't do, you know, monogamy, but, but they really don't want to pass up 10 people and confuse them. And if you'd be honest from the get go and say, look, at it, this is what I know about myself. This is what I'd like to create. Five, seven people make up, no, not doing it. The other person goes, wow, really? I was always kind of afraid to say that, but you know, I kind of want that too. I just didn't know who I could do it with. How does that look? And then you present it to them. Okay, so one, what do you want? Pick a category, okay? What are you looking for? Now, I'm gonna give you an example of mislabeling it. Um, so I, I have a friend who called me up. She was all excited. She'd done this work. She said, okay, Susan, Susan, I know my title. I'm looking for a lover. Now, she's not French, okay? She lives in the US. I said, oh, okay. So you mean you want the guy that sends you a text at two in the morning, like, hey, you up? Or do you want the guy that sits across from you at a family dinner on Sunday? And she said, well, of course, I, I want the latter. I said, girl, that, that's called boyfriend in the US. She got a lot of responses online, but she didn't get what she was looking for and she was grossly misrepresenting herself. Yes, she wanted a romantic physical relationship, but she wasn't putting it in the right box. So she was not going to be happy and she was going to disappoint others. I have another example of somebody that wanted partnership and wanted a boyfriend. Now, this is a lady who married, divorced, grown kids. This is her time. And, you know, she's very happily involved in her life. She works as a choreographer. She's very busy and she has a boyfriend. Now he's functioning off the traditional model. He lives a couple of hours away and they get together on the weekends. And he thought he would do the right thing because he honors her and he respects her. And he said, I think it's time that we live together. And she said, oh, hang on there, cowboy. Uh, let's just talk about this. And here was her issue and why she wanted boyfriend, but she wanted her disclaimer a little bit different and live apart from each other. She knew her truth. She knew what she could do and she knew the kind of design where she would definitely bail. And she loved him and she wanted to stay with him. Monday through Thursday, she gets to focus on her work. She gets to do things for herself. She's already played house. She's taken care of kids and a husband. She's not interested in doing that again. They have a fun, dynamic, committed, trusting partnership. They can trust each other with the distance every weekend. She can be done with her business. He comes to her house, she goes to his house. She can focus fully on him. She can explore, play. She doesn't have stuff in her head that she's got to do. And she knows herself well enough that if they move together, the thing that she loves so much about keeping this relationship rich and exciting and dynamic and true for where she is in her life today would completely dissipate because then she'd look at him and say, you left your socks on the floor. Again, again, I told you. And she doesn't want to be that. So ask what you want and know the kind of way that you want that. Find the difference so that you can be clear with your partner, okay? Step number two. Okay, where am I here? Why do you want what you want? Now, this, this is important. I know, I think you're probably going to say, well, I want it in terms of your end goal. Are you dating? Are you partnering? Are you looking to be with this person because you want marriage, a family, a companion? You want to, you want fun. You want a sense of belonging. The reason is very important because it defines how and why we are going to place this person in our life. And it also defines what's our responsibility and what is theirs. You know, at one time in history, all a woman wanted was for you to come home with your paycheck and be good to her and take care of her kids when we had single families that were earning, single, single earning families, right? 
But now we have evolved so much. Our whole world has changed. We have a bigger piece of the pie. And this is not just a, you know for women. This is for women and men. So we have dual income families. We have people that are growing. They have a mission statement for their life. And they want to fuse their life with somebody that resonates with who they are because it's a bigger question now. It isn't just save me from loneliness. The two things that I fear the most, if you ask yourself honestly, why do I want what I want? The two categories that I worry are, I don't want to be alone because that puts a lot of pressure on your partner. And that means, now that's true, I understand that you don't want to be alone, but you're asking them to fulfill something for you. And the more work you can do to enrich your own life, the happier you will be and the happier they will be. And it's a tremendous pressure to put on another person to save you from your own aloneness and the hole that you know we need to fill for ourselves. And another thing is social pressure. I, I know that many people, according to their culture and their family expectations, are forced into relationships, maybe not of their timing and maybe not of their choice, because they're trying to be fulfilling their duty and their responsibility to their culture. I have a friend who is Chinese and she was the perfect student, the great daughter. She wanted to make her family proud of her, got the great jobs. And then a certain time in her life, oh, 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 I have to get married. You have to get married. And so she and her partner were of the same mind. You know, they matched each other, ticked each other's boxes. And they even wanted to have their child in the luckiest of all years to gift that child with great success. All of this was strategic. And they did that. And it was very successful. And then they completed that and looked at each other and went, this isn't like this, we're not partners, right? So they completed the task, but it was for sociological reasons. It was for their society, it was for their culture. Obviously the relationship didn't last. They loved their child, but they can't be together because they found that although they were doing what they thought was right underneath this, looking good relationship, they were actually missing the real components, which were, why were they there? And that's a hard lesson to learn. So I'd ask all of you to be very honest with yourself. Why do you want what you want? Because you need to be clear on your end goal and you need to be clear on the motivation as to why you're in partnership. You want this to align with your mate, okay? The other thing is step three, now that you know what you want, how do you want your relationship to look, feel, and function in the real world? Nobody thinks about this. Nobody thinks about this. If you happen to align yourself with a partner that you think is wonderful, but you need somebody to be there, you need a lot of closeness, you need physical intimacy and closeness and their presence to make you feel loved, and they've got a job that keeps them out of town 27 days out of every month, you are going to be unhappy. That isn't a functional relationship for you. You need to have something that works for your disposition. We never think about these things. We think about what we want. We choose with our eyes. But how does this function in your life? Now, many couples that are evolving are finding that they are joined because of, of a mission. And they want to co-create together. And what they're doing is deciding, much like when they create a business, here's my mission statement. As a couple, their mission statement may be, we want to have fun, but we want to contribute to the world. And we are going to backpack through these countries and make things for children and, and help them with clean water. And they've got a mission. And this works as a, a binding ingredient that helps the couple to stay together because beyond their love, for each other. They have a greater mission that they are fulfilling. And this is where we are nowadays. So don't be afraid to dream big. And I urge all of you, when you are filling an online profile out, those of you who are dating and those of you who are beginning to construct a relationship in a new relationship with your partner, I urge you to have the courage to be honest. Firstly, be honest with yourself. And secondly, be honest with your prospective mate or your current mate because it is in this communication that we can keep this love alive. So, you know, in the traditional format, the gold standard, we were not allowed to change. So here's the rub. The known and expected, it creates stability, 
and security and predictability. And 10 years into that same relationship, you're craving adventure and excitement and spontaneity. So therein lies the rub. What, what if we decided to fuse these factors together and to create an evolutionary design that expands as we expand? And then the entire template for how you work out this situation is vastly different. Okay, now that you know what you want, you know why you want it, and you know how you want it to look, feel, and function in the real world. Let me talk about the communication, because communication is how you share this with your prospective mate. This is where you get to sell. Sell your vision. Sell it like you're pitching your company on Shark Tank. Sell it. The beauty of it. Maybe you know that you want togetherness, but like some millennials now are living in separate bedrooms. And in my generation, that was an older couple where the, they just don't sleep well together and they need their space. You do that after 50 years of being married. But many millennials are choosing that. I love it. I love seeing people ask the questions of themselves. You see, the problem with a stagnant design is that nobody asks any questions. They never ask, do I want this? And they never ask, if I don't want this, what would I want instead? In a flexible growth-oriented design, we ask, do I want children? Do I want to live with you? How do I see this going? I want to sign up for what I know I can do. I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste mine. So communicate with your partner. And then, and then the fifth step is merging your design with your partner. And I want you to know that that is constructed differently. It's not concrete, it is fluid. Anything that is growth oriented is built on agreements. Now you negotiate, you amend, you test, you see, it is fluid. You can try a design with your partner and say, you know, let's give this a month. Let's just, let's see how this works. I'm gonna give you feedback, you let me know. And you try and you grow and you put new things into the relationship and you talk to each other with how this is going to be. That way you are co-creating something dynamic together. And think outside the box, but be very honest with yourself. Again, I am so pleased that people are beginning to ask these questions. And again, for so many of you out there who are in something where you're in a friends with benefits or a, a, you know, a hookup culture, or you're, you're relegated to a situationship, don't despair. Oftentimes, when you really peel the layers back, you will discover through an honest conversation, your partner has a problem with the structure looking confining, not that they have a problem with you. So I would ask you to think differently and pick the menu. It's like going to lunch with somebody from LA. I'll have the omelet, but I only want the egg whites, okay? So you get to change this love design so that it works for you. So this is the major presentation. You are going to refine it. You are going to test it. Oh good, we're at 24 past the hour. And Laura, I am willing to take questions if there are any, and I open this up for discussion. So thank you a lot, Susan. Thank you. Providing us with these five steps. I thought it was very uh, eye-opening to uh, think about relationships and uh, your own empowerment in these relationships from this light. Because as we were discussing a little bit before we started uh, the webinar, um, and like you also said, is that the boxes that we think in are still quite um, uh, old are still quite yeah. classical a classical view of how relationships should look like but we're now in 2020 and we are embracing diversity in all different kinds so that also yeah. includes diversity in relationships and these designs that you call it so thank so you very finding, much finding thank you finding your love model is your task and communicating that clearly to your existing partner or your prospective partner you know, listen, and I'm not excluding those of you in committed relationships and those of you who are married, you all know that it's work to keep that relationship growing. And sometimes now 
for the agreements that you craft with your partner. You may go in, you know, guns blazing with this is what I want. And I need this and this and this. And they may say, well, you know, I need this. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. negotiate, be fair, try, give it a chance that your partner is never going to feel like they actually have a seat at the table and that they're co-creating with you. If you exclude them and just it's my way, now you're back to a dictatorship. and We don't want that. No. We want you and your partner to feel excited and to explore within a committed relationship. I'm a monogamist. I'm, I tell all of my audience, I don't apologize. I don't care if you think it's old fashioned. Don't let anybody tell you you can multitask love. You can't. I focus. The most rewarding relationships are where you are present and you are focused and you are giving that person everything you have. And as a reflection back, they will do the same because you're creating a space for richness and content and security and safety, and you're honoring them. And to you know, be doing that and trying to do three other people at the same time, that's to me not real involvement in this way. In, in a committed relationship, the point is to invest. Very beautiful. Shall we take a look at the q and I see that there are questions popping in. Do I click too, or do you click? Do I click on this little button? <laughs> this you is can also click right here. together. Oh, I I see. See. Okay. Ah, can yeah. I move the little button sideways? Yes, I can. <gasps> Misha, you <laughs> wonderful woman, Misha. How about the evolved partnership of Camilla Harris and her second husband? Oh my goodness, do you know? I do not know that. So you guys are gonna have to, I've been so involved in my world. You're gonna have to explain this to me because I know Will Smith and his wife have a very different kind of partnership as long as it's based on agreements. So you guys are gonna have to fill me in. Maybe there will be a, a follow-up later okay. on Facebook for this question okay. because I'm also not really involved in this evolved partnership. I didn't know that. I you know, sure we'll get back to you because it's I'm a so very, uh, very uh, actual um, question right now. Okay, let me see. I see a question for from Kat. Yes, we will answer live. How do you okay. start a conversation with someone you are uh, with someone you are in a situation with who is much younger than yourself? Okay, uh, th this I know very well. First of all, cat add value. You know, if you are older than your partner, you've got some content to bring to the table, emotional content, you've got depth, you've got warmth, you know how to connect. Your skills should be pretty refined at having a relationship. Take them seriously, make them feel valued and honored. And if you want a committed relationship or you want some version of relationship, Put it out there as a discussion. I like putting it, I have a system I call putting it on the table. So you're working in partnership. You say, I have this idea I'd like to try and I want to see how you feel about it, okay? And then you explain it to them, you explain the dynamics and then you explain the benefits because they have to know the benefit, right? Say, what do you think about that? And they're going to tinker with it. Well, I kind of like that, but I worry about this part. Really, why is that? Well, I'm thinking it could be like this and this and this. Oh, I never thought of that. I didn't think, what, let's, do you want to try it? You want to try this for about a couple of weeks or a month and talk about it, see how it feels for us? Because I think, I, I mean, I'm kind of pushing people that are dating to give a month test drive to committing to somebody, closing the door. Certainly we had, our last 20 years have the highest rise in STDs ever. I mean, you know, all this turnover, the revolving door of sexuality and with that broken hearts. And if you all think that you can do the most intimate act in the world and try and separate your emotions, good luck, but you're keeping me employed, so that's okay. But rather than try to kill your emotion when you're being intimate with somebody, why not utilize it as emotional Velcro and create a connection where you can speak to them and you can communicate with them and you can have something rewarding and rich and it can it doesn't have to be this it can be a summer fling but you've agreed as to what it is and if at the end of the summer you go you know we kind of like each other what do we do here then you start negotiating so please don't think it has to be so formal it can be anything you want but have an idea of what a structure could be and, and choose your best option and present that to your partner. I hope that helps, Kat. Thank you. So 
during your uh, your answer to Kat's question, something came in mind. Um, what you see a lot is that people are scared to have the talk, like, what are we to each other? Oh. Um, how do you think, uh, the, what, is, what is the reason behind this, this feel, feelings of anxiety to make things official? So in this great time of we're so advanced, right? We're terrified of being rejected and we're terrified of fearing what we may already know and just don't wanna know. And I think the more um, proactive way to do that is rather than you say, so do you love me? What do you think about me? Where is it going? I hate it when people do that. That's so disempowered. I would rather that you proactively state, be courageous. I like you. I'd like to see where this is going. Actually, I don't have an interest to see anybody else. And my choice would be to see how this goes. Give it a test run, focus, see if we like each other in this dynamic. I would like to create something rich and meaningful and fun for both of us. And you can stop talking. They've heard it. They know where you're going with it. If you're not getting what you want and you're feeling unhappy and you've presented your information numerous times, then you have to think about the partner you're with. Mm -hmm. But please don't go mute. Mute is not an active choice. Mute is not empowering. Mute is I'm terrified to ask you because you're giving them, um, well, first of all, you're assuming that they don't want what you want and they might if you sell it properly. And another thing is you're assuming that they don't want you and they're going to reject you. And boy, you better get clarity on that because it's not a matter of staying in and treading water and hoping they like you. It should be getting your emotional and psychological resolve so that you know where you stand and you can either make a determination to get in or get out as you see fit, right? So clarity is worth a lot. Thank you a lot. So if I hear correctly, it is, Actually, the first steps, the first two steps of um, uh, of your love a la carte formula, like you yeah. need to know what you want, you need exactly. to know why you want it, and from that you can have uh, you have a basis. Of you can build, and you, yeah, and you can play. Don't forget, part of the you know, if you've been in a relationship for a while, you probably stopped laughing. You know, you stop playing. You know, you start bickering and arguing, and and we need to play and expand and grow and try things out with our partner. And that's how you keep long-term relationships exciting. Yeah, definitely. Shall we take a look at the Q&A again? Do you yeah. see a question that you would like? Otherwise, I will just pick one. Let's try Roman, okay. Very interesting. I find being always authentic pretty hard, but I think it makes so much sense. Even the pool of dating partners is limited by that. Roman, be true to yourself. You're not gonna want what isn't right for you. I would rather, so I explained to my followers, you know, like how the iPhone has that little light in it. We have the flashlights. Mm -hmm. If you're in a sea of people that all have their heads down and they're confused, hold your little light up, let them know who you are, what you stand for and what you want. And don't you know, at the end of the crowd, way over, over, over there, you see something else. I want that too. But if we amend our truth and we don't speak our truth and we're not being authentic, guaranteed you're not gonna get somebody authentic back. Give people a chance, go through the nose. No, 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 no. Rifle through the nose until you find the yes, because you're not gonna be happy any other way, really. I okay. hope that answers your questions, Roman. I think it's very hard for a lot of people to be that authentic self in this world because I think social media always also plays a role in it. You always see the, the good sides of people's life and the good sides of, of love. And that might be scary for some people. Um, is that something you see uh, in your work as well? Yes, I see a lot of fear and social media has created so much anxiety. And I, 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 I bet you've had programs about this during the festival and discussions between all of you as clinicians, but for all the good that it does to connect people, it does even more harm to make us compare. I think especially Instagram with all the filters and all the, fake lives and oh you, my goodness they're there they're in the Riviera now they're in a private airplane now they're in designer clothes and I mean it's I, I look at my life you know what my life is so my my social media people keep saying oh Susan they want to see your life I'm like how many pictures am I going to take of me working at my desk that's so exciting right that's that's my life on the phone on the computer working at the desk yes I have a private life but I mean I work a lot so I think we we just have to be honest, you know, 
if we are honest and straightforward, even if people are not capable of being that, um, we at least have cleared the way to have the potential to meet somebody that resonates from the same place. And maybe it's not a lot of people. It is the needle in the haystack. And for those of you who are involved in growing, I've done some videos on this. It's a hard journey. Granted, there are more people at the bottom of the mountain bumping into each other. And as you climb the mountain of self-awareness, yes, there are fewer people there. I made a decision a long time ago. My friend said, Susan, you X'd yourself out of any partners. And I said, you know what? For me, honestly, I've got to keep growing and learning because if I'm not going to be happy any other place. And if there's one other person at the top of the mountain, great. And if there isn't, that's okay. And you know what? Each time I come around to a new level and plateau, there are a bunch of people there. So don't think you're without resources and allies. Beautiful. Let's take a look at the chat, at the q and I'm sorry. Okay. Let me see. Oh, Carmen is asking a very interesting question. Do you see it? Um, right now, I was looking at Lucien uh, Anonymous. Uh, where's Carmen here? Here, I can read it to you. Uh, How shall we handle the behavior okay. and frustration of having a clear idea of what we want, but life doesn't present us the opportunity to build a relationship we are looking for? Carmen, how old are you and how long have you been looking? Let's take that honestly. And, and how many people do you have to choose from? Oftentimes it's a limited selection. There are times and I have to bring, and I know this sounds completely contrary, but I gotta tell you the truth and answer your question. There are times you're gonna get less than what you want because there's inherent limitation in what you're able to do in your environment to meet people. You could have some physical condition that limits you. You know, you could be of an age where there are fewer people. The trick to this is to get as much of it as you can. We're never going to get perfect. So get rid of that. Get, get that out of your head. We're going to do the best we can. The point of all this is to help you find a relationship that you find rewarding because a happy you makes a happy partner, right? So that is the thing I it feels to me, you know, it, with questions like this, I still want to answer you. And there are like five other things I'd want to ask you privately, but I have a feeling you have a limited selection of partners and it could be geographic in your case. Do everything you can to expand your ability to meet new people because that is how you find people with a like mind. Join groups, even if it's online nowadays, and you can't meet in person. Find groups of people that think the way you think and, and believe the things and want the things you want. And within that group, you should find somebody with whom you resonate. I think that's a very good tip for everyone who is looking for love in these times. I was also thinking right now, we're living in very uh, extraordinary circumstances with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I can imagine that finding love has become even harder uh, I am in a, in, a, in a committed long relationship, so I don't know what dating life uh, looks like right now during the pandemic, but can you shed some light on sure. what, what is the situation? Um, well, in America, people are voraciously dating and, and you know, it's very interesting, the transit, because um, when we first had our lockdowns here in the US, there were people that rushed into what's called a turbo relationship. You know, they'd meet each other at a networking party, knowing the next day they're going into shutter in place. And so they're like, you want to be with me? I want to be with you because I don't want to be alone. And they played house for three months. I have a number of people that were just briefly seeing somebody had just started a relationship and they're like, let's do this together. And it was the most rich and rewarding relationship. Why? Because they focused. Mm -hmm. They didn't have all the noise. They were able, and then they, they've come out of these, and the majority of people that entered these turbo relationships where they actually spent time together say, I feel closer to my partner in three months than I had to my ex that I knew for three years because they are of the mind, like if I went through this and we survived it, we're getting married. So there were a lot of marriages. On the same hand, there were also a good number of divorces where people were stuck together and going, yeah, what did I ever see in you? Now I have to be honest with myself. And they separated. There were also people that started virtual relationships because they couldn't see each other and they found a partner online and every day they woke up to the calls and they had a buddy to get them through it. Many of these relationships didn't survive once the lockdown was lifted and they met each other. You know, 
So people are always finding ways. And we also, it, it, it birthed the uh, video chat for online dating. Every dating app, everything from Bumble to Match got online with video dating so that people could meet each other because the imperative to love is continuous. Yeah. What I see in the chat is um, a, per a question about you personally. Okay. Uh, Tamar is asking, um, first of all, uh, he or she, they thank you. Um, thanks, Susan. You're always very empowering. Um, you're so strong now. You can see through people's fears. Can you tell us how you reached this state? How did you overcame your own fears is what uh, they asked. Oh, oh, I still have them. Please don't think I don't. Uh, Tamar, I will tell you honestly, I tell my girlfriends and my guy friends, I say, when I get in a relationship, if I go crazy, will you repeat to me what I know is true? So part of this is we have to understand that we're in the midst of it. Sometimes we can't see it clearly. We have all sorts of reactivity. I used to say, I don't have to go to a therapist. All I have to do is get into a hot relationship and all my stuff's gonna come to the surface. But I've had an eventful life. Um, wow, most people don't know this. So I grew up in a violent home and an alcoholic home. And I remember as an only child and adopted, that was a lot to work through. So, and then I also fell in love with a man who was 20 years younger than myself, which started me in this career because I'd flipped from 39 to 40 and he'd flipped from 18 to 19. And this person with a looking good job and financial news and in television nationwide suddenly was a leper in her own community, you know, because I loved, it, it, nobody wanted to see me in love with him and have us living together. They wanted to see me using him and abusing him. And, and we had a seven year relationship. It was just impossible, the, the location and the place. And I'd never been hated by so many people and it hurt me so much. And I remembered thinking, I'm just loving him. And my only crime is that he's younger. He looked about 28, I looked about 31. We were perfect together. He was so evolved. I didn't go looking for it. I knew him for a year. And I think the, the greatest growth I've had as a person has been born from the most severe challenges. I don't think you get the pearl without the sand. I think the chafing and the rubbing create the growth. And I had everyone hate me. And I mean, literally I had friends that wouldn't talk to me. I had people make up stories about me. And I knew none of them were true and I couldn't even defend myself and I couldn't defend myself against him because then I'd be telling him his family was crazy because his mother was the one who wasn't gonna have this happen, right? And so I remember when nobody was there, I had to be there for myself and I had to dig deep into my spirituality. And I had to learn slowly. I don't have to love myself, whatever that word means, but I have to learn to be in agreement with my choices and how I'm showing up each day. And I'm very sensitive to other people's pain or their moods. Remember, my survival depended upon a twitch of an eyebrow. Am I safe or am I not safe? So I've grown up hypersensitive to being able to feel people and even through the phone or through a casual conversation to feel what's going on. It, it was how I lived. So I think that I think that we shouldn't be afraid of our challenges. Don't go out, to, you know, don't go say, well, I'm gonna get myself in trouble, but. If you have a challenge, understand that the universe is here to assist you. It's not here to like, oh, I'm going to screw you over. Let me just pummel this person. This stuff doesn't happen randomly. It happens to us with a grand design that in the midst of it, we can't see it. We can't figure it out. And we're just crying. If you just give me the reason, I'll do it. But tell me why. And sometimes you don't get the reason until way later. And you go, oh, my goodness. I never thought I'd end up here talking to you in this way. I was reading about stocks, you know? So you end up where you're supposed to be sometimes. The universe will kick you sideways through pain to force a growth, to dislodge you from maybe a lesser effective version of your contribution to life and kick you into where you need to be. So for those of you struggling, there's a purpose. You got to just find the gem in all of it. And so I thank you. I think that was a long explanation, but I hope that suffices. Thank you so much. Thank you for opening up about this and uh, being vulnerable about how your life has brought you to this. And I think your, your story is very important for people to hear because 
there are so many people who are in similar situations or feel beaten down by life and yeah. like you said don't understand like why is this happening to me right. Right. and it is so important for them to to hear these stories so thank you for that thank you for sharing and thank you for asking thank you yes um let me see an anonymous attendee um ask about how do you find out what kind of relationship you want that was also something that was in my head like um i can imagine that it's quite hard for people to know what they want and of course to know what they want in a relationship with another person so how do you find it out oh this is a very very sophisticated answer it's very scientific so scientists hang on to your hats trial and error that's it you go through what you don't want to figure out what you want but here's a secondary part that it's worth taking time to do when you have come out of a relationship and you're shaking yourself off you go well i certainly don't want that again please 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 do yourself the great service of doing the second part of the equation which is instead universe i would like this time I'd like a partner that's truly committed to me and has the capacity to love the way I love. You know what? This time, throw me mutual love. This is what I'm looking for. So you reset your compass to that. So even these first three steps where I'm telling you to ask these questions, it, you know, it sounds laborious to some people like, oh, I don't want to go through that. Of course, I know what I want. Well, you might not. And take the 15 or 20 minutes to do it because the our internal radar is quite wise. You know, we will tend to pick with our eyes, let's be honest. I do it too. And my eyes land on something and I go, oh, Susan, really? And my joke is, is that the guy who's gonna pick you up after the colonoscopy operation? No, I don't think so. He's not, he's not. <laughs> he's cute, he's not for that. Wrong category. No, 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 that's not the guy you want. And so, you know, we tend to pick with our eyes and try and jam in the contents we want. So the better way to do it is to isolate the contents we want understand that we will be picking with our eyes. And as we land on somebody, instead of superimposing the qualities that we want in the relationship, we start to see who are they really and we've been attracted to them now on a deeper energetic level because somehow our radar was very clear as to, I want a, a loving ethical person. I want a person who's a peer, who understands me, who will value me as I value them. And so when we start looking from that angle, and you're never gonna be with somebody that you're just, ugh, that you, you, it's just not gonna happen, so don't worry about that. But you will meet the person that is agreeable and has those contents, and then you're in resonance. And that's, that's how you really create the better version of what I didn't want. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. And that, it's not really, even really a mistake. Don't be afraid yeah. to not end up on the first try with, with what you exactly wanted. And listen, everybody, we've got to cut ourselves a break. This is life. It's like, did they drop you here with a set of instructions? Really? Did they? Do any of us really know? Part of this is coming up with our own philosophy and our own truth. My truth may be different than your truth, so I don't want anybody to think what I'm saying is the truth. This is, these are the findings that work for me, and they seem to work for other people, but you always have to tweak. Nobody's got the one answer. So you know, we're doing pretty well here day to day. When you're a young child, you try and do as you're told and you mirror the environment around you. And then as a young adult, you start to in individuate and you don't, you want to be cool and separate, and then, but you want to be part of the pack and you go through, you know, appeasing your society and appeasing everybody else. Then you come to a point in your life where you're like, ugh, what about me? We're just trying to speed up the process and integrate the whole thing. Um, but give yourself a break, you know, it's life. We're all improvising here. Okay. Yes. I hope that answered your question, uh, anonymous Intendi. I think it's I think it's something that a lot of people are struggling with. So thank you for uh, clarifying that. I saw a very interesting question um, because we have been talking a lot about dating and finding a new partner, but there are also a lot of people who are already in a relationship. Yeah. And yes, uh, Mark Kawakami is uh, asking for a friend, of course. And uh, he asks, um, how do you keep your relationship exciting, sparkling, spectacular, or other fun objectives uh, when you have a little toddler running around the house all the time during the pandemic? 
Very interesting, Mark. Nobody said that was easy. And parents have double duty because your first job is to be a parent. And the last thing at the end of the day is maybe you get to be a partner to your partner, right? So we understand this. Um, it is, I'm not saying it's easy, but uh, you can incorporate your child into some of the fun and playtime. And I think you've already learned with the toddler that a lot of the experiences that you're having that are fusing you to your mate are really the beauty and joy of witnessing a family and watching your little one grow and discover life and realizing that you are trying to empower them to be the best version of themselves. And then it's always a question of infusing something new. So we need to continue to grow ourselves to bring that new stuff into the relationship. So maybe it is reading a book or uh, watching a movie with your partner and you can discuss it, or it's a new hobby if you're allowed to get out of wherever you live and outside, um, because I'm realizing we're doing this during COVID, right? And everybody in the world is in a different position as lockdown or not lockdown. But infusing mentally, dedicating yourself to the idea that we need to keep adding new stuff to the relationship, whether it's Western swing dancing, or it's a tango class, or it's let's take a cooking class together, or it's let's turn on the Netflix, we can't leave the house, you and I are going to actually learn how to cook a pot roast because we've never done this. Just new stuff, because new pathways create new excitement. And that's, that's a wonderful way to try that. Very helpful. Also for me, I'm, like I said, I'm in a long relationship and pandemic um, is putting a lot of relationships like, like under the, under the looking glass, so to say. Yes. yes, uh, yes. Like the things are getting, um, uh, are getting superimposed. And I feel it's like a garden, like the garden is already there, but for, in order for it to flourish, you need to tend to it like all the time. You cannot say, okay, well, this season, I'm not gonna, gonna water my flowers. Well, if you're in lockdown with somebody, you've got to carve out private time to keep your sanity, to keep you social and nice because you each need to have a little space if you're in a small environment. And at the same time, you need structured together time because you've got forced together time, but structured together time where you interact and do something fun. And I think during all the heaviness of this and much of the heaviness has just been lifted, at least here in America, just some kind of answer to all this. Um, but we are finding that we need to keep laughing. I know it's been a lot for a lot of people. 2020, such a cool sounding year, so challenging on every level. But we, we've got to remember to laugh and play with our partner, however we do that. That's the juice that keeps it fun and exciting. And once in a while, we have to put some effort into it. You know, they've seen you in the same t-shirt and sweatpants for seven days in a row. I know you can't go anywhere, but wash your hair, you know, try, make an effort, make it easy for them to say, I know why I go from the bedroom to the living room every day. It's to see you. I can't wait. <laughs> Sounds very, uh, very recognizable. The, the <laughs> scene you just sketched. <laughs> um, I see here a question from an anonymous uh, attendee. Um, how about my boyfriend who says he does not want a committed relationship, but he acts towards me as the perfect committed partner for more than three years now. Yeah. I tend to let it be. We talk about it and I feel that he loves me, but he does not dare to speak those words. Wow, I've heard that so many times I can't even begin to tell you. So. I know it's frustrating. I believe for him it is a structural problem because I said at the top of the hour, it is not one of commitment. This partner has an underlying fear of whatever his assessment relationship boyfriend means. He's got baggage attached to that. So you need to decipher very clearly what is his resistance. What exactly is he imagining he has to take on? He's already living it. The best thing, the best thing, best thing, best thing you could have revealed is that you know that he loves you. It's an irritation. You have a committed partnership with a person who loves you. Okay, that's good. But you want the status. I get it. That's your, that's your assumption that without the status, it's not a valid relationship. Yet you're living the truth of it. It's silly. I get it. A lot of people are staying away from labels because of the fear of being resp uh, emotionally responsible for what happens in your life. Not that he's not, 
but they think there are greater implications to that, or a fear of a dead end design, which is structural. Identify, be very, very clear. Don't battle him on trying to get the title right now. Find out, just out of curiosity, what, what is, what part of it do you hate the most? And he'll probably reveal to you, I hate this and that and this and that. I don't want to go antiquing on a Saturday. I know my friend said that now that he's in a partnership, now that he's the boyfriend, he's got to go to these showers and he doesn't want to go to the shower. He wants to shoot hoops and I don't want that. You might find it something so silly or it may be unconscious, but sell a better idea. It doesn't have to be that. Find a word that is agreeable that the two of you create that's your own little love word for what you've got. Get him out of what he's resisting and move him toward what is in agreement with him. That's, that's how you make it work. I hope that helps. So in the example, I was thinking you, um, you named, for example, that, that someone doesn't want to be a boyfriend, the, the label boyfriend, because he wants to shoot hoops on Saturday or he doesn't want to go antique shopping. Do you often see that someone doesn't want a label for these ex external reasons because that has nothing yeah. to do with the relationship between two people. Yeah, that, that's why I said it's structural. Yeah. The fear is more the assumption, don't you? So this is legendary. People get married, right? And suddenly they, they're fighting with each other. They were great living together because they come preloaded with, well, a husband does this, well, a wife shouldn't be doing that. I have a friend whose husband decided to move to one of her homes in, in Florida. He just, you know, he's he was ready to quit working, he just left her. And I know that there's, there are a lot of reasons she's angry, but in her world, a husband doesn't do that. So she's either gonna be really frustrated the rest of her life because a husband doesn't do this, or she's going to find a way to get a workaround where they can both agree, okay, to what it is. So she's actually decided to move and be with him. Okay, so now there's harmony. So, you know, it's, you have to find the workarounds, right? So that's what it is. Create your own labels, like you said. Find a word that's unique to the two of you. Yeah. That, that has nothing attached to it, no baggage. Because what you've already got is functional and beautiful. And, and don't let your friends get in your head. <laughs> Our well-meaning friends. Well, he doesn't call you a girlfriend. Oh my God, was he introduced you as friend? To uh, that's so embarrassing. I know. Don't let them talk you out of it. What kind of relationship do they have? How happy are they? If you've got the real thing, hold on to it. Just work with these little pieces. I think that's very helpful. And also, like these labels are so set in stone. It feels like they are set in stone, but it's not the case. You are in charge of your own relationship. It doesn't have to be for you. Um, listen, I, I let me, I should have said this at the top of the hour, but for those of you in a traditional relationship that is the gold standard and it's working fabulous, you have no resistance to any of the component parts. You don't have to work on that, that's great. For those of you who have a resistance and you blocked yourself from getting into something that's rich and rewarding that really satisfies you, Take a look at it. And for those of you in a structure that want it to grow a little bit, consider adding some of these factors. This is never to disparage something that's working. I wanna be very clear about that. It's, it's really for the people that are discontent, hunting, searching, hoping to find something better, to create something better. You can create it. If you don't see what you want out there, make it. Look at it, we live in a DIY culture. Look at me. I used to have camera crews and makeup and a di distribution inherent in what I did. Now I've got three lights in front of me. I've got to do all this stuff. <laughs> I've got Laura doing what I don't know how to do. I mean, it's so much work now. You didn't have to wait for a record company. You can make your own music and put it on the internet. So we live in a do-it-yourself culture, but you wouldn't think to recreate your love model that works for you. Exactly, yeah. Let's go to the last question because uh, I, I can kept, keep on talking to you for hours and I see that the questions also keep coming in. I, it's such an, a universal topic. Um, but I think this is a, a pretty good one for everyone. Lots as well. of questions here, wow. So, asking like what mindset should we have into our first relationship, especially when it is a really good friendship? 
do your best. Try to be honest. Try to not fear uh, speaking your truth. Take responsibility when you know it's your stuff that gives your partner hopefully the right to do the same. Set ground rules that honesty is okay. Honesty is not punished. Um, it, is, it is not the truth that you tell me that will hurt me. It is the lies that you lead me to believe that will carve my soul in pieces. And I don't want that. So I would rather a partner tell me the hard stuff so at least I know what I'm dealing with. So set a stage for honesty and set a stage for exploration. Our intention is this, let's see. Let's see how we can create this. What works for us? And make it about fun and discovery, but have your component pieces in place. Honesty, communication, and commitment to the greater, to the greater kindness. Be kind to each other. Be kind and thoughtful. That goes a long way. Beautiful. I am learning, I've learned so much, and I think I speak for everyone that. I'm very happy that you uh, that you gave this this keynote today, and I'm sorry for everyone who has been asking questions that we that we couldn't answer. Uh, Susan, do you have any any take home messages for our watchers today um, for the rest of the day? Yeah, I thank you for taking an hour out of your precious day to devote to this to take another look at what you might want to do and how you may want to edify what you've already got, or you may want to create something more dynamic that is authentic and real and true for yourself. Remember, we're never gonna do well what we disagree with. We will do well what we want to do that reflects our true resonance and our personality and our higher goals in life. And fuse your mission statement into your relationship. If you want to create something big and beautiful and dynamic that not only serves you and serves each other, but serves the world, that's a pretty good connective factor that you're in service to something even bigger than the love you share is the love that you give and what you create. So that's my two cents for today. And thank you everyone that made this possible. Misha, thank you everyone. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's see, I don't know how this works. Um, <laughs> thank you all, everyone, all the attendees, and thank you again for the for the beautiful and heartfelt uh, questions. Uh, that also takes a lot of guts. So I want to uh, thank you for that as well. Have a good day, evening, wherever you are in the world, and uh, bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.